Hello, my name is Dr. Joy Barnes Johnson. I'm a Princeton High School teacher and proud member of the Paul Robeson House of Princeton Board and Program Committees. Today, I'll be reading a book called A Graphic Biography of Paul Robeson, Ballad of an American by Sharon Ruddle. We're gonna start with this question. What exactly is a ballad? Which is an interesting question. A ballad is a poem or a song that narrates a story in short stanzas. That's exactly what this book, a graphic biography of Paul Robeson does. I'll be reading an abridged version of the, of the graphic novel. The front matter of the text allows us to know that this book was published in 2020 by Rutgers University Press, his alma mater. The five chapters each serves as its own song or voice, verse or stanza that tells the whole story of Paul Robeson's strength, his humanity, his courage, and his resolve to be a fighter for social justice in the United States and abroad. Chapter one, Son of a Slave, Star of Rutgers, tells the familiar story of Paul Robeson and the Robeson family in New Jersey. The 19th century uh, America was embattled and torn by chattel slavery, the effects of which have lingered through the 20th century until today. Paul's father escaped that system on the Underground Railroad, and so we'll pick up from there. During the Civil War, William Robeson joined other fugitives working for the Union Army. After the war, William worked as a farmhand to pay his way through Lincoln University. He became pastor of a Black Presbyterian church in Princeton, New Jersey. Can you guess which one? Reverend Robeson married Maria Bustle, a school teacher of mixed Black, Native American, and English Quaker ancestry. In 1898, the year the last of William and Maria's five children was born. Can you guess which one? Pioneer Black journalist Ida B. Wells appealed to President McKinley, but nothing was done to stop the wave of bigotry and violence engulfing the South. During his days at Rutgers, Paul Robeson wrote his senior thesis on the unrealized promise of the 14th Amendment. He called on all Americans to work with the established order to uplift his people. Paul was elected valedictorian of his class that year, 1919. His speech drew cheers and hearty applause from the graduates, faculty, families, and Rutgers alumni. Chapter two, first steps on the stage. After graduating from Rutgers, Paul Robeson went to law school. He hoped his talent for debate, his knack for getting along with people could smooth his path to success as a lawyer. He moved to New York City to attend Columbia University, sharing an apartment on 135th Street, Harlem, the Negro capital of the world. In the first decades of the 20th century, 2 million Black people migrated from the rural South to Northern cities. They found no promised land, but better health care, education, and job opportunities. Illiteracy and infant mortality declined. During one game, Paul injured his thigh muscle and was rushed to New York Presbyterian Hospital for an emergency operation. Dr. Murray, an assistant surgeon impressed by Paul's courage and charm, introduced him to a bright young lab technician. Dr. Murray didn't know that Paul and Essie had bumped into each other at Harlem parties. She made herself indispensable to him. She saw herself as someone who was scientific, who was practical, who knew to choose a very few number of friends, an early bird who insisted on planning, 
she thought of herself as a girl scientist working in a great institution. Paul, on the other hand, he saw himself as this artistic person, highly impractical, a bit of a night owl who made friends with everybody, loving to leave things to chance, or at least that's what she thought of herself and Paul. After a year of courting, Paul Robeson and Eslanda Good were married in August, 1921. They were the perfect New York couple. Chapter three, he finds his voice. In chapter three, we learn about Paul Robeson as he became a performer. He eventually gave up much of his pursuit of law and traveled to make money as a singer. Spirituals, the songs and stories of a lifetime became famous parts of the Paul Robeson repertoire. Songs like Swing Low Sweet Chariot, Sometimes I Feel Like a Motherless Child, Go Down Moses, Joshua, Joshua Fought the Battle of Jericho, and Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen were perfect for his bass baritone voice. The new Negro era was an era of black excellence and aesthetics. In the late 1920s, the Harlem Renaissance was at its zenith. The Robesons were among the elite new Negroes, stylish, talented, and admired by fashionable whites, like Carl Van Vechten, and friends with artists like Zora Neale Hurston and Langston Hughes. Quoted in The Messenger, a political and literary magazine of the time, Robeson once said, art can bridge the gulf between the white and black races. I can do no better than to do my own work and develop myself. His son, Paul Jr. was born in November of 1927. Chapter four, a world to win. Paul was recruited to um, do a film called Jericho uh, in the uh, 1940s or late 1930s. And so he and Essie traveled to Egypt for filming. Paul belted out high priest Sorastro's aria from the magic flute, Mozart's 18th century appeal for freedom and brotherhood. After Jericho wrapped, the Robesons collected my good and Paul Jr. and returned to London. Paul was one of the big stars slated to perform at a benefit for Spain, sponsored by H.G. Wells and Virginia Woolf. But old man river just keeps rolling along. Paul Robeson announced the credo by which he will always be known. I stand before you in unalterable support of the government of Spain, freely chosen by its sons and daughters. The battlefield is everywhere. The artist must take sides. He must elect to fight for freedom or slavery. I have made my choice. Saludo, comrades. Mr. Robeson spoke many, many languages. Paul and Essie were escorted to Republican held Barcelona. Why have you come to Spain, Mr. Robeson? I belong to an oppressed race, one that could not live its fascism triumphed. The whole place lit up as if somebody was reaching out to grasp you. Tony Rowland, Sergeant of the Medical Corps, next to the Volunteers Training Center in Tarazania, everyone knew Paul from his films, his concerts, and his records. Paul Robeson was very, very popular. Mr. Robeson believed in international brotherhood. 
Here are a few examples. Paul met with Beijing opera immortal Mei Lan Feng, fearless and defying the fascist Japanese occupying China. He and Essie, that is Paul and Essie, lunched often with the future prime minister of independent India, Jawaharlal Nehru. Paul Robeson was fed up with acting in plays and films that cut against the very people and ideas he wanted to help. He was a global citizen. 10 years after Paul marched with the Welsh miners, the head of Ealing Studios asked him to make a movie in Wales called The Proud Valley. Europe and Asia trembled with the advance of marching boots, air raid sirens wailed as Paul approved the last edits. Essie packed and shipped trunks, gathered her mother and son and met Paul at the London docks for their return to New York. Ballad for Americans was a huge hit, instantly becoming the anthem of the popular front. Robeson was the voice of our best selves. Chapter five, bloodied but unbowed. Peace and friendship are two of the most important legacies of the Paul Robeson era for me. And so I share this section from chapter five. Before his return to the United States, Paul gave a concert in Moscow. He had heard rumors of anti-Semitic purges and tried to find his Russian Jewish friends. Poet Itzhak Pfeffer was brought from his jail cell to Paul's hotel room. The room was bugged. So the old friends communicated silently. The house I live in, my neighbors, white and black, the people who just came here and generations back, a home for all God's children. That's America to me. Paul Robeson paid the price for his political activism. His passport was taken and he was denied the right to travel. So um, one really important idea to think about is exactly what Paul Robeson's voice meant, whether it was singing or speaking. People wanted to hear what he had to say. In 1952, Paul Robeson was barred from travel to Canada, which did not yet even require a passport. So he gave his annual concert at the Peace Arch in Washington State. His audience gathered on both sides of the US-Canadian border. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night. Robeson disappeared from textbooks and halls of fame in the mid to late 20th century, but his influences have endured. Old Man River just keeps rolling along. The last page of this amazing graphic novel provides insight into the life and work of Mr. Robeson. It reminds us in the last decade of the 20th century, the Soviet Union fell and Reds were replaced by new enemies. The internet made it possible, however, for younger generations to see Paul Robeson perform and hear his magnificent voice. He began to receive honors once denied by racism and persecution. James Earl Jones, performs one man Broadway show about Paul Robeson in 1978. Sidney Poitier wins the Academy Award for his narration of a short Robeson documentary in 1979. A star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame was placed in 1979. In 1980, Mr. Robeson became a member of the Grammy Hall of Fame. 
the Paul Robeson House in Philadelphia was designated a historical landmark in 1991. He was inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1995, received a 1998 Lifetime Achievement Grammy. In 1998, he also would have been 100 years old. So worldwide celebrations and academic conferences for Paul Robeson were established. In 2004, the, the United States Post Office issued a Paul Robeson stamp. In 2007, um, a box set of Paul Robeson films was released. In 2012, the United States Information Center in Jamaica was named for Robeson. Paul Robeson Plaza was dedicated at Rutgers University in March of 2019. And well, that's the 100 year anniversary of his graduation. And Paul Robeson Boulevard, a major avenue was named in New Brunswick in July of 2019. The artwork and the text of this wonderful graphic novel are one that are now available at the Princeton Public Library. I hope you'll pick it up and enjoy it as much as I have. Thank you, have a great night.